Hello folks, this is your host, Seth Mena, welcoming you to another episode of Ask Pete. And now, welcoming our first guest, Pete Mena. What do you mean our first guest? I thought the only guest. Now, I told my son to liven this up a little bit. Son, I'm proud of you, man. All right, well, thanks for that. And now... <laughs> It's time to get to our first question. Alrighty, Dad. Well, it looks like for our first question, we got a guest star here, Moses. Yeah. But anyway, all right. Our first question comes from Panzer Medical, and he's asking if you could devote a few minutes to discussing fishing post spawn, suspended muskies, deep water, and no man's land. Oh, actually, yeah. That's uh, that's that's a great topic, and I, I would start off by saying it's actually my favorite and probably the best time of year overall to target muskies in open water, especially so if you're a caster. And here's the deal, they uh, after the spawn, I think the fish that are open water fish, they don't take much time at all to get out into those locations. They go right out into deep water and they feed in open water, spaces on, on open water for it. But the important thing is, is they do like warmer water temperatures overall. So this time of the year, they're generally higher in the water column. So it doesn't matter if you're in 100 feet of water or whatever you might be. You can probably concentrate on that top 15 feet, let's say, of the water column, regardless of the depth of the lake, okay? They're going to be up high. So that's cool because you don't have as much of a zone to cover whether you're trolling or casting. And in reality, if you're casting, you can essentially take this time of the year and still be effective. Your presentation's the same ones that you're using structure fishing and go right out in open water and test that. So, And then the other thing, and of course this gradually changes as you move away from that spawn period. But while I will say that they don't spend a whole lot of time waiting around in the spawning area if they're open water fish, it's still a transition, right? So they don't immediately just leap to all parts of the lake. So especially where you have a body of water where there's not a tremendous amount of spawning area, possibly just a few isolated spawning zones, you can figure on a bigger population of open water fish being close to those obvious spawning zones which are inlet bays and, and, and this type of thing. So concentrate in the water closest to the spawning zones, obviously it's a high percentage deal, and concentrate on that top layer in the water column. Dad, Dad, put down the water. We got questions to answer here. Can't be drinking. Guy can't have a drink? No, never. All right, so this question comes from Pistol P651, and this is actually one that you somewhat answered in the comment section, uh, but you made a promise that we would do a video on it, and so we're going to fulfill that promise right now. We are? Yeah, Pistol we, we are. Yeah. I like um, that name. So his question is, why can't muskies be a catch and release fish in Wisconsin? Oh, boy. Well, uh... Frankly, I, I, I think they could be, but it's just simple politics, frankly, it's, it, it's that simple. There's a million different arguments out there, you're never going to make everyone happy. There's going to be somebody saying, poor little Johnny catches a you know, world record muskie or whatever and he can't keep it and he's going to, you're going to crush his psyche and he's going to turn to drugs and alcohol and good Lord knows what might happen. But in, in all seriousness, that that kind of thing happens you can't keep everybody happy but I would say I would answer that it probably should be in reality it would make things simpler they are the lowest density fish out there and it would be the absolute simplest way to deal with it and keep everybody on the same page and of course it would be fair nobody would have to worry about regulations or whatever there, there should always be the ability though I would say this for an exception to the rule uh, in the absolute oddball deal that, that maybe possibly a fishery got overstocked and they, and they actually did get out of control somehow. This is extremely rare in reality. I've seen so few cases of it, 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 it you shouldn't even mention it. But I, I agree that it should essentially be catch and release pretty much all over the continent. 
with the ability for the DNRs or, or ministries resource people to make an exception in a few particular cases. All right, Dad, and uh, Mike Thompson asks, what is your favorite body of water to fish for muskie on? Oh, my God. Just about impossible, sir, to answer that. It really is. But I, I can clue you in. I, I'm going to say Lake of the Woods because you're asking me what body of water, right? So I, I'm going to say that because I've spent a ton of time on it, and I will continue to. Uh, but... The most important thing I would say is, at least for me, I've gotten to the stage where I'm looking for really good quality fishing opportunity. In other words, hopefully big fish and as many of them as possible. But to me now, it's it's the most important thing is an overall experience and having a good time. And uh, I, I love the vastness of the Canadian Shield. I love the rocks and the beauty and this, that, and the other. And obviously, if you've ever been on Lake of the Woods, uh, you know, it's a it's a tremendous musky fishery with a, a tremendous amount of vastness. And even though it's it's popular, a lot of people have heard of it, a lot of people fish it, there's always plenty of extra water and a million different options to try. You absolutely never get bored, and you've always got an opportunity to catch a great big fish. All right, Dad, and this question comes from Casey Viking, who might I add had a Viking logo as his YouTube profile picture. No! Is, that, yeah, that's ugly. Uh, but anyway, we'll still take your question. Um, Are you sure we should? Yeah, we probably should. It was on there. Uh, right. And his question is, is if you couldn't fish musky, what would be your next favorite fish to Ooh, fish for? He's full of tough questions, too. Well, uh... Oh, uh, everything. Uh, smallmouth, uh, no. I, in in all seriousness, even though I haven't done a ton of it, I'm I am really kind of a toothy critter guy. I would be most intrigued by alligator gar, believe it or not, and trying to catch them on lures. Like I only tried once, but I I, I want to do more. But they're unbelievable. They're big and they're nasty and they're ugly, just like a muskie. And they're really a challenge to figure out how to get to hit artificial lures. And I'd like to do more of that. All right, thanks again for watching. This is the end of our uh, episode five of Ask Pete. And if you guys have any questions, make sure to comment them down below. Like the video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't yet for daily updates. Any thoughts, Dad? Oh, yeah, do that. And son, it was a pleasure dealing with the new Seth Maynard.